Welcome back to the Listing Agent Show. With me, I have my co-host, Davis, from Vulcan 7. Davis, uh, what is happening today, my friend? Hey, glad to be back. Awesome, awesome. Today, I want to talk about something very, very, very important, which is how to use the Vulcan 7 platform to get more listing opportunities, more seller leads. And so, Davis, I think a lot of Vulcan 7 uh, users may be missing a really good opportunity that we're going to uncover in today's episode, which is like how to use the neighborhood search functionality to go out there and search for additional listing opportunities. So I'd love to kind of uh, have you share your screen. We'll pull back the curtain a little bit and we'll show them how to use this functionality inside Vulcan 7. Sound good? Cool. Yeah. All right, let's do it. So perfect. Thanks for sharing your screen. So um, we were just talking off air. Why don't we, I guess before you get into that, there are two options for users when it comes to neighborhood search. Is that correct? Yeah. So in terms of like the type of data that we're going to pull, so most of all of our packages include what we call the standard neighborhood search. Uh, Then we also have the option, like if I go in here to start a new search, you can choose between to use these two types of data, right? Standard, which is unlimited. You can perform as many of the, as these searches you would like. And then we also have premium, which if you're paying for that package, you get a thousand premium lookups you can do each month. And, and premium meaning what, like what would be the difference in the data? I mean, the main difference between the data is like how much data you're going to get back. Um, I, we designed this neighborhood search to get you in contact with people. I know that there's some other neighborhood searches that you just go in a neighborhood and you download everything, even if you don't get phone numbers or email addresses. Uh, we just designed it just specifically so that you can reach people, right? It's designed to call people. So it, when we're looking for properties, if, for, for contact information, if we don't get a phone number, we're not going to create a new contact for it, right? Like we're it. only going to give you what, who we find results for. I see. All right. Very cool. So before you get into the actual demo today, let me just give the use case. Um, so here's what we're talking about today, you guys, is if you're an agent, certainly if you're on the Vulcan 7 platform, you're getting for sale by owner data, you're getting expired uh, listing data, you're getting old expired data, you're getting for rent by owner data. Well, inside the Vulcan 7 platform, you can also go into the system as an example. And what I recommend is that you go into a neighborhood with a property that sold with multiple offers. And how you know that was the case is you go in your MLS, do a search, look for the properties that sold with the average days on market, a zero or one. A lot of the times in the agent remarks, it'll show, hey, multiple offers received, your highest and best offer is due on this day at this time, so that you as the agent know there's multiple offers on that property. So now you as the smart realtor says, okay, I already know there are buyers with purchase agreements in hand that want to buy a house in this specific neighborhood. And what we know is this, when one house sells, multiple other neighbors will also sell. It's monkey see, monkey do. So we go into Vulcan 7 and we put that property inside the system. And Davis is going to show us exactly click by click, step by step, how to create that neighborhood search so that you can then pick up the phone, communicate to those neighbors the fact that there are multiple buyers, we know this for a fact, that have purchased contracts that want to purchase a home in your neighborhood right as we're having this conversation. It is a very, very powerful opportunity for you to go out there and get listings. So Davis, with that being said, can yeah show us kind of uh, how they can do that click by click would be great. Yeah. Now, I also want to point out, like, I like what you said at the beginning, go into the MLS and, you know, find a recently sold property, right, or listing, because I talk to so many agents that they say, I don't have a listing coming up to, to call around, right? They, I think we get in this mindset of they can only call around their own listings, right? Yeah. Which I think that's really key what you just said there. Yeah. You know what? Why don't we do that? Why don't I get a, give a demo of that first? I think that will bring a lot of context to this episode for the viewers. So like, we don't leave anything out because you're right. Like they're just missing this. Like you don't have to call around your listing (laughs) and you can be absolutely communicating from a place of integrity. When you make these, these phone calls, when I use that script that I just kind of went through, 
like it's real, it's truthful, and it doesn't have to be your listing. Um, certainly the buyers aren't your listing. We're communicating with the neighborhood what's happening. And when we have a multiple offer situation, what a great opportunity for other sellers because it's one thing to go in blind and list a home and hope that there's some buyer traffic in there. But what if there was a world for all the realtors watching this where you knew before listing a home that there are four or five other buyers that already had offers written on that home. Like it changes the entire dynamic. So yeah. let me let me share my screen. Okay. And then I'm going to get into this real quick. And then, so we'll do the MLS part first. And you, you know what I'll do? Oh, do you have access to Michigan or you can only look into your into your area? Yeah, I just have just, just test contact information. Well, no, are, are you talking about for the MLS? Or, well, sorry, for, for the neighborhood search? Yeah. yeah. I can, yeah, I can search anywhere you like. All right. So, so actually, why don't we do the whole thing from start to finish? You guys are getting a nice specialized uh, episode today. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me go my MLS and show you what I'm talking about here. So I'll just read that later. Okay. So I'm going to go inside my MLS and I'm going to go properties that have sold. We'll just say in the last 30 days, uh, we want sale. Let me just put in my area. And I'll show you guys exactly what Davis and I were talking about here. So I'll just put in one of my cities that I go after. Okay. And so I'm just, you know what, I'll just put price point in here, 200K plus. Okay. So there's 68 matches. So what I do is I hit results. And what I'm looking for is I, my eyes go right to this DOM or days on market. And so here's one at three. I might go to that one. Let's just look at that one as an example. And this property sold in three days. What I'm trying to look for. All right. So look, in their agent remarks, it says all offers to, to this realtor's email address. This would be a great example of a property that we know that has multiple offers because he's saying all offers, meaning more than one. But let me just show, let me just see if I can find a better example of what I mean here. This will make more sense. And it doesn't have to say zero because usually if properties have multiple offers, it takes a day or two to get through them. Let's go to this one. This one sold in two days. Uh, look at this. This is a great example, Davis. The list price was 459. The sales price was mm -hmm. 480. So what another great communication point to the people in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and let's just see. So this is just the remarks, but so, oh, let's see, hold on. Uh, so, so I'm looking for the realtor remarks in here. I bet you this one had multiple offers, but I could just see somebody in the YouTube comments saying, oh, how do you know they had multiple offers on it? Well, let me just sh show them. This one, I can almost guarantee you it did. It sold for 480, but I want to show them specifically. Let's see if I can get an example. Maybe I should have had one ready for us, but you know what? It's better in real time. Here's another one. Listed at 469, sold at 500,000. Um, all right, so here's another one, right? So please send all offers. So you guys get the point. And so let's just use this one as an example. Uh, let me give you this address. Okay. If you're ready. So 3796 Thornberry Court. And that is in Rochester Hills. So this is what I mean. This is what Davis and I mean by going to do a little bit of research inside the MLS first. Do you want me to share my screen? Did you capture that? Yeah, I got it. What's, what was the zip code on that? Let me see. Hold on. Eight, uh, 486. 48309. Oh, 48309. All right. So can you share your screen and show us what you're doing on your side? So now once we have that information, yeah. we go into the Vulcan 7 system and Davis is going to show you exactly what to do so we can get all the neighborhood data to start prospecting this neighborhood to share the great news. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to click start new search here on the right side. I'm going to yes. first choose which type of data I want to search. Let's In this example, let's use premium. I'm going to search the uh, property address here. You need to start with like a zip code or maybe a specific property. So we'll search this uh, and then we can narrow down. So here's uh, the property that, uh, that we're talking about. We have options here on the right side. I can do a, uh, uh, a Saphir, right? I can draw, you know, click and drag and draw a, uh, a circle here, or I prefer this, you know, you can draw a box on a map. Me too. For, you know, I, this I prefer area. the same. 
So, so yeah. here's what I'm going to kind of guide you. So, so what I'd like to see you do is, yep, yeah, exactly. Zoom out a little bit so we can capture this entire neighborhood. Um, and so we'll get all the properties with inside these major streets. So that's, this neighborhood's pretty big. We might even be able to go yeah. bigger, but that's fine. This is good for now. Okay, we'll just- That's, just, that's really just one street in the neighborhood, Davis. Let's go bigger. So, so zoom out we'll a little bigger. bit. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, so here's what I wanna do. There you go. Yep, let's grab this whole corner all the way down. Go down Adams. No, no, go oh, south. Adams here. There you go. And go all the way down to South Boulevard, right there. Gotcha. There you go. And now we can go up past that, the golf course. So now we're grabbing this whole area because again, we know there are more than one buyer that wants to buy a house right here, right now. So we draw the radius, makes total sense. And before you do anything, I wanna make a couple of comments here. To your point, talk to us about likely to list. And then I wanna to talk to them about another thing that's on the screen right now. So likely to the list, this is actually a pretty new option that we're adding. And yep. we're actually adding more cities every single month. So if you hover over this box, um, this will give you a list of all, all the cities that it's currently available in. So maybe check this before, make sure it's available in your area. But we, you know, our system will do the best we can to locate and find who's the most likely to list. We use a, def, a, a bunch of different data points to, to find that. Yeah, I love it. And so that's one great option. The other thing that if you've been following me for any length of time here on YouTube, you know that I'm an absolute uh, freak about absentee owners and non-owner occupied properties. And so this is the other thing that Vulcan 7 has added. You can, if you just hover over that, show them what I'm talking about, by a click of a button, you can go right in here and you can get all the data for all the absentee non-owner occupied properties only if you wanted. And so I just wanted to show them that really quick, but for now, let's get all occupied properties. Okay, cool. Uh, you obviously have some other options here, right? Bedrooms, bathrooms, but let's just generate this list. Perfect. Now it's gonna sit here and think, and uh, it's gonna take maybe a couple minutes uh, because this is real time, right? Like we're, we're real time, we're looking up new information for it. This, this isn't, these aren't phone numbers that have been just sitting in our database. We're, we're reaching out to our sources. We're finding new data real time. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, the technology is, is, and that's a really good point. I mean, and this is pulling cell phones, emails, to your point earlier, whatever data we have on the homeowner, the, the system is going out there right now and getting all of that data for the agent. Is that right? Yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's going to go a little bit slower just because we're on Zoom too. Yeah, we're on yeah, that and also we're we're looking at premium data, right? It's going to go through more sources. It's going to do a more detailed search. So, so while yeah. so while we're waiting for that, I just want to add a couple of things. So so once you get this list, you guys, Davis will show you what happens inside the Vulcan Seven system and how to access the data in just a second. But we want to talk about okay, well, what do we do now, Brandon? So certainly, let me just give you guys a phone call script to use. But you can also use other systems out there to communicate with these, these homeowners. Uh, one of the ones that we use is something called Mailbox Power. And so we can do a direct mail campaign, put it fully on automation, hit a click of a button, and send a mailer to this person once every week, just like an e email, over the next 12 weeks consistently would be another great way to communicate with them. Another great way is by sending them messages inside Facebook and Instagram, right? Another way is you can use uh, systems like uh, uh, slide aisle, as an example, load up the list, put this into a slide aisle, drop a broadcast in the neighborhood, drops all their ringless voicemails, communicating the fact that, listen, this is Brandon. I'm a local real estate agent. Uh, the property here on Thornberry just sold with multiple offers, which means we have many buyers that want to buy a house right now in your, in your neighborhood. Call me back if you have any plans on taking advantage of the market this year, and I'll, and I'll see how much we can get for your property. A message like that is something you can leave in the voicemail. So now that we have uh, the data, let's talk about how do they get this loaded up into their dialer. Okay, so first off on premium, it's going to download, you know, about 25 results at a time and you can always request more contacts from that search that you're doing. Well, the system will download uh, a higher amount. It's like around two or 250 for this if you're running standard data. Um, Got it. Okay. Uh, so uh, if I go um, 
uh, let me move Zoom here out of the way. If yep. I go to the Contacts tab, what it does is it creates a new folder of the search that you just performed. So if I scroll down here to Neighborhood Search, we have this Rochester Hills folder, new folder, and here's all the contacts that it just loaded up for me. I love it. So, so we have Michael Phelps here. So if we want to call go. Michael Phelps, we just you know select the box here and hit begin dial session and start calling them. So easy. I mean, just you guys, just within a matter of a few minutes, the power that it, that you have access to within Side Vulcan Seven is incredible. Um, and so, what a great opportunity for you guys to utilize the tactic and the strategy that we just that we just talked about. Now, now, Brandon, do, what do you recommend in terms of following up on neighborhoods or how often you call them? Is that similar to for expireds and FISBO? Do you call them the same amount of time or what do you recommend there? Yeah, good question. So, no, I mean, it's a little bit different. I mean, any, if it's a if it's a what I call a hand raiser, a lead that we know wants to sell, the urgency there, we might reach out to those folks two, three, four, five times a day. We might go knock on their door at, at, at night. But when I'm taking an approach like this, that's more of like a circle prospecting type uh, approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt them. Essentially, I'm going to uh, have a block of time in my calendar every single day. So this could be one of the lead sources in, a, in an agent's business plan. And so mm -hmm. they have to have 30 to 45 minute, a block of time to call through each one of their lead sources, Davis. And so if this is one of them, I want them to spend that 30 to 45 minute call block calling through that list. Now, through, and I'm curious to find out in like an hour's worth of time on your dialer, do you know how many dials it will make? Do you know that off the top of your head? Mm. I, I, uh, I mean, it all depends on, you know, who's answering, right? How many people are no, no, answering? No, 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 no. Just, just how many dials, how many dials the dial. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's a good point. Because the single line dial, I'm just curious how many dials it will make per hour. Um, per hour. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just I, I, don't, I don't have any... I don't have any numbers like that specifically, no. Yeah, so so what what I, going back to your question is in an hour, we should be able on the Vulcan 7 dialer have at least eight to 10 conversations. And so through that should come at least one listing opportunity for every 10 conversations that they're having. And so once they do that, I recommend they do that every day. So every mm -hmm. day, 30 to 45 minutes, we call through there for a 45 minute call block. We should, that should yield us eight to 10 conversation and one listing opportunity in that neighborhood every single day. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, and then, and, and, if you're, and if you're calling, if you're calling premium data, like you're, you're going to hit that, you know, like absolutely. the standard data is great as well, but the premium data is, 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 is awesome. Yeah. And what we're seeing with the premium data, just, so you know, the answer rates we're seeing, you know, upwards of like 20, 22, 25% answer rates which is really, really good. That's how we're able to have eight or 10 conversations for every 45 to 60 minutes of prospecting, right? Um, and we're reaching the right people, having the right conversation, using the right dialogue, the right scripts, which then yields us one or two listing opportunities to go into our seller pipeline. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. So dude, this is just another great feature for you guys. If you guys want to access Vulcan 7, you wanna give them a shot. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. We'll put a link in the description right underneath this video. We, we make this show every single week. So if you guys want or, or need help with something specific inside the Vulcan 7 platform, just use the comments and Davis or myself or Ren will read the comments and we'll make a future episode for you guys. So thank you so much uh, for watching. Davis, thank you so much for, for providing the demo. And uh, we'll see everybody next week.